I started rowing because uh, I was actually transitioning out of another sport and was looking for something competitive uh, to be a part of in high school and I have a family member that was a rower. They introduced me to it and I was hooked. Why did you start rowing? Because I saw a poster saying want to try rowing in uh, one of the hallways at the university. So I went to like the first indoor learn to row and I loved it. Who loves Irving? But then, <laughs> then I decided to try rowing on water in the summer and it's way better than, than Irving. But yeah, that's pretty much why. I just said, why not? There was actually a young guy working with me one summer, a son of a friend of mine who had done it, the learn to row the year before. I decided I'd try it. I really liked it. I ended up doing it twice just to make sure I got it right. But I, it was a lot of fun. I used to see them on the Nile going very smooth as if they are really high class of ballet moving smoothly and so elegantly. I used to see them that and I always wished to do it. I was very young at the time, I probably was five or six. Once I joined the university, first thing I asked, where is the rowing club? And then I joined right there. I started rowing in high school, so why do you do anything in high school? Yeah, have friends, have fun with your friends. Somebody suggested it when I was still working and I never had enough time until I retired and so I gave it a shot and I loved being out in the water so uh, it was a good uh, replacement for my social circle. It was a lifelong ambition when I came to Calgary and Calgary Rowing Club. It presented itself to a learn to row so here I am. I started sailing because a friend of mine and I sat down with a bottle of scotch one day and we're just enthralled by the Vendée Globe. Uh, the race around the world. Um, so that inspired me to at least get out on the water and take some breeze into the sails. The thing that got me started in sailing was that my dad was a sailor and he was a member of the Glenmore Sailing Club and we were just children and he took us out in the boat with him and, uh, and we thought it was wonderful. I just enjoyed it. Um, I decided to take a course on the coast and my instructor was from Calgary and said you should come to Glenmore Reservoir and keep up your skills by racing. I love being by the water and I love seeing land and approaching land from water and so I decided to take up sailing and uh, it's absolutely fantastic, so that's why I took it up. It started a few years ago when my mom signed me up for one of these summer camps. Um, I think it was to just get me out of the house and I had no idea how far it would take me. But I guess all those days on the water and making all these incredible memories, um, I started to look up to all these incredible coaches and all these incredible athletes and these people in my life. I started to really look up to them. And I guess all those days of, um, you know, going to this camp, they turned into days of training and days of, you know, tiny steps and opportunities to reaching one of my big goals. Welcome everyone. Uh, I know we still have people joining, but uh, as you join in, welcome to Sport Calgary's Faces of Calgary Sport featuring water sports at the Glenmore Reservoir. So great little video. So whether it's a bottle of scotch or friends or parents, whatever got you going, um, you know, we want to educate um, everybody who's watching, participating in this. Uh, we've had a ton of questions and just educate you on some more options. And we started doing these a couple months ago, just with the closures and the restrictions. We want to introduce you to some sports when we are going to open up and we're going to open up soon. Um, so we're getting close to the finish line. So before we start, I want to actually give everybody a breakdown. I love to let people know where the audience and those who registered, um, how much they know about uh, these sports. So uh, about 30% have heard of these sports, seen pictures, but know nothing about the sport. Um, about 10% have watched videos on TV or online. And just over half have either, either tried one of the sports or actively take part. So again, welcome to everybody. Uh, I wanna introduce our panel, a uh, great panel of experts here. First, we have Nolan Van Bryce, who's the Director of Communications for the Glenmore Sailing Club. Uh, Nolan has sailed recreationally and raced in Canada, the US and Australia. He's a sailing instructor and longtime volunteer and board member with the Glenmore Sailing Club. 
He and his wife are Canadian champions, and he was Sail Canada's Volunteer of the Year in 2019, which is awesome because we need to continue to celebrate our volunteers and continue to promote our volunteers. Between his teaching and racing, you'll find him on the water more than 30 hours most weeks in the summer. So Nolan, thank you for joining us. Um, so my name is Emily. I'm the manager of the Calgary Rowing Club. I've been in Calgary as the manager for about six years, and I started rowing in university in my, I think it was in my third year when I was recruited at a Starbucks, so very informal. Um, and then I decided to row and try it out, and I fell in love with the sport. Um, yeah, I'm also a uh, Learn to Row Coach facilitator, and if you're participating in any Learn to Row at the CRC, then you will usually be coached by me at least one of the days, and yeah, that's kind of all about me. So, Emily, you introduced yourself. Thank you for that. Uh, Linda, have we introduced you yet? Not yet. Okay, perfect. Okay, Linda Roberts is the club manager for the Calgary Canoe Club, avid paddler since she joined the club in 1984, starting as a sprint canoe kayak athlete. Her current focus, in addition to club management duties, is to oversee and coach the adult outrigger paddling group and still competes in outrigger racing herself. So uh, active panelists here to answer questions. Let's, again, we had tons of questions, you guys. Um, sent in from the registrants. Um, let's start each one of you. Um, how do people get started? Uh, Nolan, we're going to start with you because, you know, I think with all these sports, right, it, it's, it's intimidating a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm intimidated by it because I'm not a big water person. But what about equipment? How do people get started with the, with the sailing club? Sure. So the sailing club, a few years ago, we really pivoted to be in a community sailing club. We bought more boats so that members of the community can sail. So it's really simple. We run experienced sailing programs, uh, continue sailing programs and racing programs. So the learn sailing programs are all about getting started. Um, the experienced sailing programs are sort of a one-off, like women, wind and wine or boys, boats and beers. Opportunities to just come out and try sailing. And then the sailing lessons, you're looking at two days on the water to become competent crew. And then the co-op boats are boats that the club owns that people can sail without having to go out and buy their own sailboat. Which I think is probably one of the biggest questions for all three of you is, you know, that's a, that's a big investment and size, mm -hmm. everything. So uh, again, we people who want to try it out do not need to buy any equipment. Is that right? No, it's... Um, the, the cost of the sailboat itself, you could spend $2,000 to $5,000 on the sailboat. And then there's sort of all the ongoing costs, like it's parking it at the lake for the summer, storing it someplace for the winter, maybe putting sails on it every five years or so for another $1,000 or $2,000. So it's not inexpensive, but it's not cheap. It, uh, there are some expenses around it. But yeah, we do make, we, we work to make it accessible to the community. Okay, perfect. Uh, Emily, I will turn it over to you. How do people uh, join? For sure. So um, depending on how old you are, there's different programs. We have some summer camps and some high performance camps for our youth. The summer camps are for um, ages 10 to 14 and the high performance camps usually 14 to 18 years old. There's also generally the opportunity to join the junior program with two intake dates um, and then you learn as part of the junior program. Uh, there are or they were May 1st to May 22nd, which we've now pivoted away from this because we can't continue. And then also there is one in August, at the end of August, to join the fall programming. For our adults, we do generally have lunch rows, adult lunch rows, which are either weekday morning ones or weekend ones, where you do eight hours of a lunch row course. And then after that, you can join one of our uh, recreational or uh, more competitive uh, training programs if you'd like to. So same as with Nolan, all of the boats at the rowing club that um, the public will use are owned by the CRC. Uh, we have some wider shells for our beginners and some skinnier shells for those that are wanting to race. Um, you only need to bring a PFD, which is a belt pack PFD, once you join the club. For all the lunch row programs, we will provide those. So pretty much all of the equipment is, is covered by your club membership. And then you just show up and you participate in programming, uh, coach programming, and have a great time on the reservoir. Okay, perfect. All right, Linda, over to you. How do people uh, get started and try out in the program? Yeah, you know what, I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview because I think of the three disciplines here, we're the most confusing because paddling 
has so many disciplines to it. When people think of paddling and they go, okay, kayaking. Well, I've seen sea kayaks, I've seen whitewater kayaks, uh, sprint kayaks that they race at the Olympics or recreation kayaks on the reservoir. And then I think of canoeing. And I, again, I think of whitewater canoeing, uh, outrigger canoeing, which we see on the ocean and rec canoeing, and then also sprint canoeing, which we see at the Olympics. So we've narrowed our focus a little bit, what works best for us on the Glenmore Reservoir. And it is for the adults, we do have an outrigger canoeing program and we have the recreational canoes. And our main focus really is for youth programming. We specialize in the youth sprint canoe kayak program and introduction with learn to paddle programs for the kids. And again, because I think of the pandemic, we're so fortunate being an outdoor sport. So we are really popular. A lot of our learn to paddle programs have already filled up. Uh, we do have spots with our introduction to sprint paddling. I think like rowing and sailing, we provide all the equipment. So, so people can just come in, sign up for one of those programs, or even just come down and rent a, rent a canoe or get a recreation membership. And, and we have everything they need to get started. So um, for, for all of the, the three, and I guess Melinda, including yours, four sports and, and multiple sports, is there an ideal age? Because I think that's that's part of the issue is it's intimidating uh, because a lot of kids have had their programs canceled for the last year and a half. Uh, you know, maybe they're young, maybe they're teens and, and they're thinking, well, I'm too old to try this. Uh, I think it's almost easier when you're sort of my age and go, uh, I'm old, I'm gonna try anything, I don't care anymore. But it is tough for teens. Um, is there an ideal age or, or what's the age range that you start with? Linda, I'll start with you. Okay, start with me. Uh, yeah. Again, it's it depends a little bit on the disciplines. Like when we think of the sprint canoe kayak and we look at the athletes that you know get to an elite level at the Olympics, those people tend to start at a younger age. So we start our programs at nine. And it's a great program for youth to come in, learn the, learn the basics, and then get into the racing boats. Uh, having said that, we have many of our adult members that maybe dabbled in this a bit as a kid. It really is a lifelong sport. So they're going to stay in it forever. Uh, you get some of the more high-performance boats. Yeah, they're a little bit tippier, but it really is a sport for everybody. So no problem there. And then adult, um, again, you could start as a youth, but primarily adult. Uh, you know, we, we compete quite often at the world championships and they have age categories up into the 70 year old category. So yes. it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's so cool having all the juniors and then 30s, 40s, 50s and, and Canada's masters. We, we rock it like we're amazing at, at the world level. Nice. Uh, Amelie, I will ask you uh, because I, I always think of rowing as maybe an older sport, but I don't know. I don't know if that's fair. Um, you can say that rowing is generally a later entry sport, um, but late entry means like you're not like in dance or in swimming where you start at age two, right? So our programming for our junior program starts at the age 10 and then anybody can join us at any walk of life. We always have a program available for them. Um, so similar to canoeing, rowing is really a sport for life. Our oldest member um, that rowed with us was 82. Um, last year. So that is quite quite an advanced age. We have a lot of people that start rowing with us, either with their children and they start with a summer camp or because of a friend rowed, or sometimes people um, start in university or otherwise it's also a lot of retirees. They're done with work. They, they want to look for something else to do. And then rowing is a great, like we saw in the video, rowing is a great social circle as well. So it's a great way to get introduced to other people. Um, at this point in time with COVID specifically, we're only rowing in one person boats. Um, so it is, it is safe to do um, or as safe as can be, I guess. Um, for, for any age group and any age range and also any ability. We do have a para program and I think that most of the other water sports have the same thing. Um, so for para specifically as well, any age is welcome to try and just join in. Okay, which is one of the questions that has been asked and we always like to, to ask that question within the sports about the adaptability side um, mm -hmm. because so many sports uh, actually discover themselves how they can adapt, even if they don't already have a program. And so I think that's, that's great to know um, that answers one of, the, one of the registrants' questions about uh, the adaptability side. Uh, Nolan, I'm, I'll send it over to you because I think of sailing as something that 
you know, I, I, one of the people from the video talked about they learned on the West Coast. So when I think of sailing, I mean, I think of off the coast, right? I'm thinking, well, we're in the middle of a country and uh, we're, we're, we're landlocked. But the fact that there is sailing, um, you know, does that just mean the, the little boats? And does that just mean sort of a certain age? Or, or what are we looking at within that age category? Sure. So this year, uh, we have uh, kids of members at the club that are a couple of years old that are sailing with their parents. Once they get to about four years old, they're sailing some of our smallest boats. I think the thing with sailing is every boat size has sort of a both. It has a recreation and a racing boat. So you can have a, a 14 foot recreational boat. You can have a 14 foot racing boat. You can have a 18 foot racing boat. You can have a 18 foot recreational boat. Um, you can race on recreational boats. You can recreational sail on racing boats. So um, it, the boats are very flexible. And we do have, even for some of the littler kids, we have the same hull that has three different configurations of sail. A small one that'll accommodate a kid up to 100 pounds, a middle-sized one that would accommodate, say, a woman or a youth up to 130 pounds. And then you've got a full-size sail for 160, 180 pounds plus. So... You know, we cover the age, the boats are very flexible. Um, when it comes to sailing on the coast or sailing here, we are fortunate that the boats we sail, the predominant boat we sail here is a trailerable boat. So we haul it everywhere. We, we go off to the coast. We've raced around Salt Spring Island on my boat, on my style of boat. Um, we go out to the Okanagan. We race Vernon to Kelowna on Saturday, sleep on the boats on Saturday night, and then race from Kelowna to Summerland on Sunday. Um, we go down to Oregon, Washington State, Idaho, Montana. So we, we have a lot of flexibility um, in where we get to sail. It's, that part of sailing is something that I really enjoy is that kind of level of flexibility. And um, just before, we have a couple more videos to show everybody, but just before we get to that, um, with the sailing side, so do you have to become a member? Uh, you talked about some of these, come try mm. it, but, but do you become a member? It just... I don't know, when you, as soon as you talk about getting a sailboat out, it, it just seems so complicated. And uh, I, I think, uh, and again, I think that's a lot of the assumption is, well, I better become a member so that I can actually go try it. You know, we, uh, so the experience sailing programs, women, wind and wine, boys, boats and beers, experience sailing adventures, come out, get on a boat with a skipper, go sailing for a couple hours, see what you think of it. No need to buy a boat. No need to have a membership. Take a lesson. No need to have a membership. To go to the co-op boat program, at that point, become a member. To bring your own boat down to the club, become a member, join in the club programs. Um, we really looked at uh, removing barriers and coming up with pathways to engagement in our strategic plan. And that is something that we found is that there were a lot of, when people think about a boat on the coast, to think that it costs $10,000 a year to have a boat on the coast between moorage and maintenance and upkeep, that's not unreasonable. To have a boat in Calgary, you can have a total annual costs with insurance and everything less than $1,000. It's quite a different spectrum to sail on a prairie and we're really fortunate about that. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, before we get to any more questions, we're going to, uh, Becca, if you don't mind queuing up the next video, please. So I like kayaking for so many reasons. I guess some of the main ones are like the atmosphere around the club. Everyone just makes me feel so welcomed and so loved. And it, the support, the support is crazy. I guess another thing is just like simply because it's fun. I love being on the water and I love paddling. And even in the gym and even on a run, um, I love being able to push myself and being surrounded by all these motivating people. It just, it makes me f so happy. <laughs> I loved rowing um, for many reasons. I loved the training um, component of it, the camaraderie and the friends and teammates um, that I got to, you know, spend all of my days with. You know, once you kind of got through, I would say the beginning technical aspects of it, I loved the feeling of how a boat would glide along the water and that you'd have to be in unison with other people um, to make the boat go fast. I really like the team part of it. I also like how like in shape I've gotten and also like, mental health wise too it's helped a lot giving me something like to focus on because rowing like there's a lot to think about and a lot to improve on which makes it interesting because just when you think you have something down you got to keep trying <laughs> there's something there's always something more to learn so that's really good for me because I'm always trying to improve on things 
it is really wonderful sport. It teaches you so many things, not only the, the physical part, but it is the mental strength that it teaches you. From my experience all the years, you do not win any race unless you feel you have done really all your best. If you have any doubt on your ability to win, you are not going to win. Like you have to be so determined. Most important things that you learn from rowing is the strength of the character and the mental strength as well. Oh, rowing is the best. It's a, it's a great sport. It's full body. You can do it at any age. It's just fantastic. Being out in the water, it's so calm, and also the camaraderie of uh, working together in a crew boat. It's a lot of fun. Oh, the getting outdoors, the uh, being on the water, the camaraderie of it. There's many things I like about sailing. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm very competitive by nature, so I love the competition, the, the racing aspect of it. But um, I love the outdoors and everything about the outdoors. I, I love the wind, I love water, and so the fact that it's a sport that you have to figure out how to make the boat go in conjunction with the wind and the water and the dynamics of the sails and what you're doing with them. All of those things um, make it a great challenge and fun at the same time. Oh, I like, uh, I like competition. I didn't know I was competitive, but I guess I am. And uh, yeah, I like beating the big boys and watching them cry. I like that uh, there's no motor on it. Everything or everywhere I go, I have to get there by the wind and my sails and my, my aptitude for uh, controlling the two of them. Awesome. Uh, as, we, as you see in the chat, there are some questions that are coming up. Nolan, thank you for uh, answering that, uh, the, the cost of the individual membership. Just to let everybody know, we will have all of this, including the recording, uh, on our website and all of the links and videos and, and anything that you might need. And again, if we don't get to questions on this webinar, we'll be able to get to some of the questions. Um, there was a question here about, are there any subsidy? Um, our last actually Faces of Calgary Sport was about the different subsidies. So if you go to our website, sportcalgary.ca, uh, there are some, um, you know, with, with uh, Kids Sport um, and Jumpstart, take a look at those uh, links and then you can always email us for some help with that as well. Uh, Linda, I'm going to ask, um, you know, it's, we've gotten so used to a, this virtual world and even seeing the videos with everybody wearing masks is because you guys are outdoor, uh, is, are you guys going ahead right now? And, you know, I know Emily said something about individual boats. What is the protocol right at the moment? And I, I'm not asking when it's going to open up because if, if we all yeah, knew that, that would be great. But, uh, are you guys able to get going right now or what's going on? Yeah, I, th I think one of, uh, again, the, the perks of the Canoe Club is because we have different programming in the different disciplines, we are allowed to run limited programming. So, of course, no team sports and uh, no, no crew boats as well, but, but we have so many boats. Like if you were looking in the boat bay, you'd see over 100 boats right there, and many of them are singles. So we do have um, members of the club can come down, take recreational singles out. The sprint kids are still able to take their singles out, um, as well as the outrigger guys singles out. And we're just doing a really good job of, of doing the, the COVID protocol, the checking in. We've created apps. It's really helped us actually kind of get ahead of the curve, you know, and um, get a little bit more technical in the world just to maintain the safety. And the coaches are doing a great job. They're basically monitoring, supervising. We're really fortunate on the Glenmore Reservoir. These guys as I'll know that too. We've got boat patrol out there kind of really keeping a close eye on everybody. So we feel pretty good about that. We can do some programming, but for sure, we're really excited to get back into structured training, back into crew boats and, and, and have that a little bit more organized for sure. So, so uh, Emily, I will ask you the same because um, if it's a intro session and I don't, I don't know what I'm doing going into any boat, but probably the least amount of, if you were to throw me into, um, into rowing. So if you're individual, how do you do a, an, an intro session? How does that work? Um, so let's say you're an adult. Again, summer camp's a little bit different. Um, you just come down for the summer camp and the instructors 
take you through it and it's all day camps. Um, so that's a little bit different. But for an adult specifically, uh, you'd sign up for an adult learn to row course and then you would come at the times that we have put out there. We are doing small group um, practices. So currently we're on, on pause. We were going to teach about 50 people how to row in learn to rows um, for adults up until the 30th. So obviously we were scheduling all of those because we can't do any coach practices at this point in time. But past May 30th, 30th, hopefully we are able to do that again. And then you'll come down and you'll learn in a small group environment. Everything is outdoors. Everything is socially distanced and you're always in singles. Um, again, we are following the COVID-19 protocols that we've put in place very closely and we haven't had any issues so far at the CCC and at the CRC because we share a building. So we've been really really fortunate there, but we've also done taken a lot of precautions so that nothing happens for us. Um, you'd come down, we would put you on in an indoor rower first to learn the body movements. And after that, we go over some boat safety. So how to self-rescue pretty much, how to, um, like, what is an oar? What is a boat? How do you get into a boat? And all those kinds of things. Generally, we then attach you to the dock so you can row and start getting comfortable to the movement of the boat. And eventually you will release you into the wild, which is kind of the dragon boat bay. Um, and then you put around there and you learn, you learn how to row and how to handle the equipment and how to propel yourself forward as in backwards because we row backwards. And so um, the coaches then just putter, putter around as well with the, the motor boats and um, give you some feedback, individualized feedback, and then you show up again and you improve from there. So usually our adult lunch rows are eight hours in length. Um, they're either split in the weekday mornings, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, or otherwise four hours on the Saturday and four hours on the Sunday. So we okay. run you through the whole course. After that, you have the basic skills and then you can join into a program. So I think that was part of the, the videos as well. Like it is, it takes a little bit of time to get completely familiar. You don't just hop into it and you know exactly what to do. Um, but we are, we are there to su support you every step of the way and teach you and meet you where you're at as well. So while I have you, Emily, there was a question about, are there any plans? You, you'd mentioned the Dragon Boat Bay. Are there any plans to start Dragon Boating? Yeah, uh, so that's I, actually more Linda than it is. Yeah. Oh, it is Linda. Okay. Yeah, so, so See, I just answered here's, in my, the here's my knowledge of not understanding anything. <laughs> canoeing, canoeing discipline. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so true. That is right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, again, we we make uh, we, we make really good use of the dragon boats for all our youth programs. We we have school programs and dragon boats, but unfortunately, last year and this season, no dragon boats. So that's on hold. So even if things open up. Or have you just made the decision, like, I know it's hard to plan, yeah. but is it just easier to plan ahead and say, that's not going to happen this year? Right. So as far as the equipment and whether we can get them on the reservoir, that's on hold. But the Calgary Dragon Boat Festival has made the call at this point in time to, to not host the festival for 2021. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, and Emily, thank you for answering. We're taking registrations for summer camps uh, for the rowing club. Okay. And uh, Nolan, is it the same then with yourselves that you are able to go ahead right now uh, following the protocols um, and what sort of that timeline? Because that, that's everybody's question, right? With, yeah. You know, yes, masking the protocols, we're used to all of that, but are you going ahead right now? Yeah, so we're fortunate. If, if you're looking for an analogy, use golf. Um, golfing can go ahead. Sailing can go ahead. We're contained on a boat. Um, and so what we've got is single households or people who are uh, an individual living alone, forming a cohort with up to two other groups or uh, individuals or individuals. So there's sort of three configurations that can be out sailing at this point which is exciting. It gives people that needed break that something to look forward to every week works on both our co-op boats on the club's boats, as well as individual boats. So we've been out sailing, um, really fortunate. Uh, the club has a new drone. So we've been uh, out the last two weeks and have some very cool drone footage out on the reservoir, which is kind of fun. Um, our summer camps, because the kids all learn in individual boats, uh, the camps opened up, and I kid you not, they were all full in 10 minutes this year, which was surprising, but I know parents are looking for something. So we hope that uh, we can move some people off of those wait lists and things open up a bit by July. And some of the kids that are on wait lists can actually get into courses this summer. It'd be fantastic. 
our adult lessons and our experience sailing programs um, are on hold because we have four people in a keel boat in one of the larger boats. Uh, even with that, you can't keep the physical distancing in place. So until, uh, until that eases, we're holding off. But as soon as it eases, we have this year, we have three times as many instructors as we did last season. Uh, so when things open up, we're ready to open registration. You know, and it's, uh, we need all the good news stories and, and hearing mm. from you guys about how registration is up and, you know, it, it's options and that's what we want to make sure and, and give uh, Calgarians the option of. Uh, Nolan, you'd mentioned in the chat, the, is it $325 for a membership? Um, Linda and Emily, can you give us a, just a, a general range of, of what a membership or just a cost of, of joining a club or, or, or a program is? Sure, I'll go first. So as far as the recreational um, people come in, they can get a membership for $325 for a family, and that gives you free access to canoes and kayaks on the reservoir. And then a single is 180, we have a student rate, we have a junior rate. And then from there, we have the two disciplines of outrigger canoeing or sprint canoe kayak for kids. And our sprint canoe kayak, it's basically like another sport. Kids are going to come in, they're going to do an intro program, no membership required. But then if they want to compete like a sport like soccer or something else like that, it's going to be $500 for a youth um, participant to join for the whole on water season. And then that just goes up, you know, slightly incremental if you're U16 or U18, just because you're getting that much more coaching and attention. So overall, really, really, I think economical sport to be participating in. And Emily, just before I, I um, get you to answer that question, Linda, you mentioned about $325. So I could bring my kids down and we could, um, you know, access to any boat. How do I know the guidelines? Because if people are out training and we're not really familiar, um, do I need, what, what do I need to know? Right, you know, it, it's a good question. Um, we, we make sure every new member comes in and gets an orientation session. So oh. we've been, you know, hard at that for the last two weeks. We have a lot of new returning members, but, but they come in and right away, it's like, what's your background? What's your experience? And then how much more information do, do I give them? And again, it's, uh, you know, we feel really fortunate with our boats. They're pretty stable. It's a safe environment to be in. But uh, for sure, there's so much going out there on a normal season with the rowers, you know, in the race course and the kids and spring canoe kayaks. We have a traffic flow pattern. We have a race course. So we're, we're pretty careful giving out directions and guidelines to the new members, like where you should go and what you should do. And even using the dock, like proper etiquette. And, and Emily and I are pretty tough. We're down there all the time and just friendly reminders. You know, we see people in the wrong spot. The SS Moy's back on the, on the reservoir again this season. So there, there's a lot going Going out there so it's constant mm -hmm. education we both have a fantastic staff you know like I'll have 15 staff members through the summer months so we it's just something we stay on top of all the time and we've gotten pretty good at it I would say dogs allowed in the boats no so there are several bylaws thank you Katrina and uh, again that's it's another perk for having the uh, the boat patrol out there it is our drinking water so it's a little bit more strict and probably helps us cap it a little bit, you know, so stand up paddle boards are not allowed, inflatables are not allowed, pets in the boat, just to really, you know, for, for preservation of the water, the flood mitigation is obviously number one, but we, we want to keep the drinking water as clean as we can as well. Okay, thank you. So Emily, let's uh, turn it over to you. Um, if you could just kind of go through costs and, and, and what, what that looks like. Sure. So we're a little bit of a different sport, I would say, like having somebody come down without any prior rowing knowledge and hopping into a boat, you will not stay upright, like you won't go anywhere, <laughs> you will for sure go for a swim. So all of our sessions, especially for new people joining, they're all coached. So that's kind of something to factor into the membership. Um, so we have different membership levels. Usually, again, as an introduction, you always do a lunch row or you do it summer camp, and then you can join a program for there. That's like your first step of introduction. We have monthly memberships, which costs $160 per month. And our annual membership for a novice, like adult athlete, is $600 for the whole year. When you break it down, because we calculate that this year as well, um, with three coach sessions per week, if you want to attend, 
every practice pretty much comes down to three to six dollars per, per, per coach practice. So it's very reasonable. Obviously, like if you see six hundred dollars or like nine hundred dollars off the start as a registration seems really overwhelming. But if you do break it down, it is very reasonable. Like there's almost no other sport where you get coach practices, like attention from a coach every single practice where you are paying that kind of amount. Um, uh, yep. So like those are the kinds of things we also and I, I want to point that out there. We also offer off water membership. So there are some people because we believe at, at, at the rowing club that we are promoting an active community that rows, but there's not just on water rowing, there's also off water indoor rowing. So some people really enjoy just indoor rowing and don't want to do on water rowing. And that's totally fine. We have some virtual training programs currently as well. And in the winter time, usually we have as well coach programs three days a week for people that want to come in, use the ERGs at the club, do this in a group environment. Obviously COVID has been a little bit tricky and we've been erging outside. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen Instagram, but we've pulled all the ERGs outside and sped them up three meters apart so everybody can practice outside. So there we've been creative with those kinds of ways. Yeah. The creativity and adaptability has been the key for the last year. Sure. Um, just before we get to a couple more questions, uh, I'm going to cue uh, my colleague Becca because we have another video to show. Oh, just try it. It's fun. It's uh, everybody's lovely and uh, just it's something to do outdoors during the summer and it's just fun and you can do it anywhere in the world. I got into sailing by teaching myself how to sail, by learning off the internet and uh, some online instructors and just just having a go at it. So if you're interested in sailing in any way, just go out and do it and meet some people. Um, if you don't have a boat, just find somebody with a boat. Everyone's pretty friendly and teach yourself how to sail because it's worth it. I think if you want to get started in sailing and no matter what your age, the first thing to do is to find somebody who is already sailing and knows how to sail and maybe has a boat and have them take you out in the boat to see if you like the idea of being on the water, are you afraid of it, the size of the boat, maybe because there's so many options from small boats to bigger boats, boats that don't capsize with keels. And then once you think you like the idea of it, then I think you should seek out getting some lessons. Um, the City of Calgary offers a wonderful program for sailing lessons and then to be in the company of other sailors, I think you should think about um, joining a club, a sailing club, so that you can be with like-minded people and there are always more knowledgeable people in the clubs who can always teach you more and help you out along in your journey of learning how to be a better sailor. So a big thing is you have to get out of your comfort zone and I know that can seem and it can be really scary, but you have to be able to, you know, step out of your bubble and take a risk. Maybe it's just like a small little leap. Maybe it's a huge leap. But if you don't, then you're gonna be stuck in the same space. You're gonna be stuck in the same atmosphere. And it can get really boring and really repetitive. So you have to be prepared to take a risk. Another thing is your mindset. Your mindset is extremely important because that is what influences all your decisions you're gonna make in life. And I feel like a lot of us, we miss out on a lot of opportunities and a lot of chances because we tell ourselves like, oh, that's too big, or you know, whatever, whatever it might be for you. You have to be able to tell yourself that you can do it and it is completely achievable. Like all of your biggest dreams, you can completely do them. It may be hard, but you can do it and you can get there in the end. There's nothing stopping you. Life gives you so many opportunities to fail. You can fail like a billion times and you can still get where you want to be in the end. So just don't give up. Uh, I would give the following advice to anyone learning to row. Be patient. This is a um, movement of your body that you've probably never done before. Um, and it's, you know, I would say a new skill that everybody's gonna learn. So just be patient, um, have fun. Uh, don't get too, you know, I would say frustrated with it um, if you're starting out and not getting it right away. Um, and that the more relaxed you are, the easier it's going to be. Get lots of tape for your hands. Just be ready that it's a big learning curve and it takes time to get going. But once you do, it's really great. Don't give up after the first few days, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's a lot, but it's definitely worth it. Just keep at it and uh, have a lot of confidence and uh, you'll do just fine. At the beginning, you might not enjoy it so much because the boat is so wobbly and uh, you, you kind of feel uncomfortable, you feel out of balance, but it's like anything else. Once you get into it and you, you, you advance it, it's wonderful sport, so you have to be patient at the beginning. And this is one of the sports that you can do it as long as you live, basically. 
just get out there and do it. Find a learn to row and, and get out there. Just come out, uh, meet the people, they're great, and uh, just stick with it. It takes a little bit of time, but it's a lot of fun. Just come out and do it, it's a great sport. Uh, it's never too late to start, it's never too early to start. Awesome, great advice uh, from young and old. Uh, and yes, it, it does look a little intimidating. And Nolan, even when you, when you look at some of those shots from, from the sailboats, when they're literally hanging off the side and I just think, oh my goodness, <laughs> it, it, it is intimidating when you, when you don't come from that. Um, we're gonna be sensitive of everybody's time. Um, maybe one last uh, question, comment, I, I guess my question to you, to each one of you, and then if you wanna uh, give some more advice for anybody who's in, gonna be inquiring, um, you've talked about how many people are already in, uh, registered and you know, do you have room to open more up because of the situation, because now people are looking at, this is an outdoor sport, we can actually be distanced, this is what I want to try, it's adaptable, it's, it's sport for life, it's, it's for family. Um, so if it's full, is it full? Are you looking at other options? And uh, uh, Emily, you're up on my screen, so I, I'm actually going to start with you. Um, for sure. So we do have, we just added some lunch rows as well um, for the adults. Um, we go with our lunch row program all the way into, into September usually. The water is, is decent, it's not too cold. Um, so people generally enjoy it and then and can continue from there. Um, we have been pretty creative with the way that we organize our, our programs. Usually we have access to two person boats, four person boats and eight person boats. Right now with COVID, we've restricted it to one person boats only or family doubles, I would say. So two person boats. Um, so it just is a bit more, it's a bit more administration for us, but we do have space for additional people to join. Our junior program right now is 80 members strong. We have about 200, 250 members already signed up for the year. Our summer camps still have spaces in them as well. Um, so for people that have younger kids, for example, or our high performance camps as well, for those that are 14 to 18 years old, they do still have some spots. So it's a great way to try the sport. I definitely encourage everybody to, to try, like, go do a lunch row, go do, go do a summer camp, and then see where it takes you. All the videos said patience, so that's kind of the the thing with with rowing. It's not, it's a learned skill. Nobody is, it's it's like riding a bike. You, it needs a little bit of time for you to figure it out, um, but once you get it, it's it's a wonderful activity to participate in. Awesome, Linda. I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Uh, I, th I think the best advice really is to keep an eye on the website or reach out to us. And we can always follow up with people. We, we are limited, unfortunately, due to the pandemic that we can't open up more spaces because of the crew boats, you know, whereas normally we could have 14 kids in a war canoe, you know, where we only have so many canoes and kayaks. So it's a lot of singles work right now at a recreational level. Yeah, come just come to the reservoir and rent a canoe and check it out and get a vibe of the atmosphere and see what's going on. If that looks like a good fit, then you could join the club with a recreation membership, try canoeing and kayaking. And then we do have some spots available still for introduction to sprint paddling um, with our program. It's kind of that age group, 13, 14 year olds. And, and that's all on the website broken down to age categories where we can accommodate some more kids. Quick question before I turn it to, before I ask Nolan, um, if people are going to drop in, do they also need to bring their, um, do they, what do they need to bring? Do they need to have anything? Uh, for if, the if they, club, sorry, go ahead. If they join, if they have the family and then they get everything from you, do they need their own life jackets? Right. So no, um, you know, every, again, just, you know, checking things out on the, on the website, you're probably going to get inundated with emails and updates with me on safety tips and weather. Um, we're, we're suggesting people like bring, bring your own life jacket um, this year, but we provide everything paddles, PFDs, you know, for the canoe rentals. But I, again, just in light of COVID, if people want to paddle on a regular basis, I would suggest getting your own PFD because it's more of a personal um, type of equipment. And then on top of that, I would recommend go get it now because I know they sold out of PFDs like last year in the summer months. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Linda. Noland, uh, I'll turn it over to you, space for, for camps and learn to. Sure. So this year, um, the youth camps are full at this point. The youth team is uh, close to full, but there's still a few spots on there. 
Um, hit a wait list, absolutely, because if the, if the um, legislation changes and eases and we're able to open registration for people on the wait list, we're running right now, our camps are running at about a third of capacity, um, just based on the number of kids and instructors and boats. So we do have more capacity when things open. On the adult side, um, we do have three times as many instructors on the adult side this year. And we've increased the number of lessons that we're teaching. We were previously only teaching Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we're now teaching Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday. So what took us previously three weeks to get a number of students through uh, a number of courses we can do in one week. So it really changes the dynamic for us. It, it, COVID's been okay because we even worked with the, the national sailing body to develop an online course, which we're giving free to everybody who signs up. So if you go to the website and there's an orange banner at the top um, and you can say you're interested in the program and we'll get back to you by email there or I'll phone you because if you put your phone number there, you will hear from me. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Well, again, uh, just sensitive of everybody's time. Uh, the links to all three clubs were put in the chat box. We will have this on our website, um, including the entire recording and um, all of the additional resources. So I want to thank our panel. Uh, thank you guys. Um, I learn a lot. I always learn a lot from these because I, I don't I don't know it because, uh, you know, I, I know it from a distance, but again, as a participant, and I've been asked by a colleague to join the uh, adult learn to row. So I'm hesitant because I'm not very patient. <laughs> um, I'm still figure it out. <laughs> not good with water. I was good on frozen water. So uh, I know I need to get over my own fear. So um, thank you to our panelists. Um, you know, this, this is great because we just, we want to introduce sports to Calgarians. And so there are a lot of options out there. Again, uh, to all the registrants, thank you. If you have questions, let us know. Go to our website, look up the resources from our last phases of Calgary Sport regarding the uh, funding uh, for low income because there are opportunities. And uh, I wanna inform everybody June 3rd is gonna be our next one. Uh, we need to go three weeks. We have um, our own reporting to council we need to do. So June 3rd, we're going to be talking uh, martial arts. So again, another option. And keep your fingers crossed, everybody. Stay safe. Uh, we are going to open up. And, uh, you know, if everybody follows guidelines, get your shot. We will be opening sooner rather than later. So um, we're, we're, we're close to the finish line. We keep saying this, but we are close. So again, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us and uh, stay safe and have a great rest of your Thursday. Thank you.